Hello, my name is Ali, and welcome to my channel. We are back with Color X Malice and Emotos are out. Let's go. Phew, I'm stuffed. Thanks for breakfast. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Man, everything was so tasty. That was satisfying. The moment he finished speaking those words, and Emoto suddenly paled. Wait, I came here to apologize, but now I'm here asking for seconds? I chuckled as I watched him clutch his head in shame. <laughs> Enomoto, please don't make that face. As a cook, I'm very happy that you enjoyed my food. Oh, really? Yes. Not only did he give me his impressions, he ate it all without leaving a single grain of rice. Please come over again if you'd like. You... are you seriously saying that? Yes, I'm being serious. Wow, I get to experience such decadence again? <laughs> you flatter me. No, it really is a luxury. Your little brother must be blessed to be able to eat like this every day. Then a door in the living room suddenly opened. Mm. Oh, Kazuki. Bringing a guy over on your day off? Nice. Um, hey, wait, I think you're getting the wrong idea. Inamoto walked over and stood in front of Kuski. Hoshino saw that I was hungry and was kind enough to offer me breakfast. Where'd you pick up this stray dog from? Kuski, don't be rude. He's got a lot of nerve to be so loud this early. Don't talk like that. What? I'm just stating the truth. But... Wait. Hoshino. And Emoto gestured at me and turned to Kazuki. It's my fault for being so loud. Sorry about that. My bad. And Emoto dipped his head in apology. Now you're just making me uncomfortable. No, I'm taking responsibility for my mistake. I gotta make it right, but... You shouldn't blame your sister. Hmm? Kazuki's expression abruptly changed, and he glared furiously at Enomoto. Who the hell are you? Are you trying to lecture me? No, but aren't you being a bit too harsh on your sister? If you live together, you should be more... Shut up. Whatever. Kazuki slipped past Enomoto and started for the door. Wait, Kazuki, do you have band practice today? Who cares? I can't relax in this place. Yesterday I learned what Kazuki really wanted. I thought that our relationship might be mending. But in reality, things don't go that smoothly, huh? I'll head out then. You can stay home, Kazuki. Huh? Please come with me, Inamoto. Hey, you... I picked up my coat and tugged on Inamoto's arm. Hey, you sure? It's fine. Once Inamoto and I left the house, I stopped tugging on his arm. I'm sorry you had to see that. Nah, it's fine. Is your little brother always like that? Yes. But I'm responsible for Kazuki becoming that way. So I don't think it can be helped that he acts that way right now. It can't be helped? That doesn't sound like you. Do you really think that it's fine for your brother to stay that way? I... Of course I didn't. Especially now that I knew Kazuki's true feelings. You look like you don't want to give up on your brother. Inamoto looked up at the sky, a pensive expression on his face. Okay, let's take a walk. Hmm? Don't worry about it. Come on, let's go. Before I could give him a response, Enomoto began walking. Wait for me! I chased after him. In the evenings, I often came to the pubs around here with Seiki. But it feels strange walking here in broad daylight with Enomoto. Feels weird, doesn't it? Hmm? Enomoto gave voice to the very thing I've been thinking. He had a blank expression on his face. What's wrong? I... 
I was also just thinking that it felt kind of strange to be walking with you through this area. <laughs> Did you think I had read your mind? I'm not Shiraishi, so I can't do that. I know, right? But, well, that's an odd coincidence. I was thinking the same thing. You might have heard this already, but I've been feeling out of it ever since I quit the police. Even after Yanagi kindly hired me, I haven't made any progress in my investigation. It's painfully obvious that the office would be no different without me. And Amalta looked up at the sky and squinted. It's like I've lost all trace of the fire that used to burn inside me. And it probably won't ever come back. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. But... And Amalta suddenly stopped and looked at me. No matter how much I ran or pushed you away... You always just butted right up against me. There were so many things where I wondered why you bothered. I wanted you to leave me alone. But you never backed down. Frankly, you beat me. I'm sorry, but I really believed that I couldn't abandon you. I don't have skills or experience, so all I can do is give it my all. <laughs> I think... I think I know how Satake feels now. My partner is far more honorable than me, and I'm exhausted and wallowing in self-pity. I really have no right to talk about being a man against men and all that. You shouldn't say that, huh? Enemoto, did you just call me your partner? I did. So you've accepted me as your partner? Well, you've definitely got a lot of guts for a rookie. He was speaking bluntly, but I could tell that Inamoto was doing so to try to hide his embarrassment. Besides, it's just way too lame for me to keep running away from you like that. Inamoto. I've been wondering whether or not my words had gotten through to him. And it looks like they did. Hey, Hoshino? I'm so glad. Everything I'd been doing up to this point wasn't just in vain. I... I feel like I'm gonna cry. Huh? Why? It's all your fault. What? Wait, wait. What happened to all that spunk? This is a different situation. I... I was always worried that you would never trust me. You always treated me like a pest, ran away, or wouldn't listen to me, no matter what I said. Er, sorry for making you feel that way. I guess I can't pay back our partnership in installments. That wouldn't be right. Okay, let's set the record straight. Set it straight? Yeah, you're a lady, and you worked hard for me, so I gotta show you my spirit. I braced myself for whatever was coming, and Emoto nervously opened his mouth and said, Hoshino, please be my partner, please. He stuck out his right hand at me. So this is how Enomoto rectifies things? Actually... I wanted to take his hand right away, but this feels uneven. To join Enomoto, who was originally working these cases, I'd relentlessly pursued him and even clung to him so that he wouldn't shake me off. When I considered how desperate I had been, been by comparison, I felt I needed to tease him a little. Uh, um, Hoshino? It's kind of hard to hold this pose. Oh, sorry. Did you want an answer? Okay, say it one more time. Could you say that one more time? Mm, again? The last, please, didn't really feel like it had enough spirit in it. I feel like I'd be selling myself short if I just shook your hand after that. Well, how about that? But I'd disgrace my samurai honor if I retreat. I'll pull more spirit into it this time. Get ready, Hoshino. And Emoto took a step back, then dropped to one knee. Oh, God. Lady Hoshino, would you be my partner? He shouted loud enough to rattle all of Kabukichu. Enemoto, wait! Please! Oh my gosh, she's so cute! It's so nice to be young. Declaring his love in the middle of Kabukichu? I suddenly looked around, 
we had attracted the attention of literally everyone nearby. Hoshino? Enomoto? Our eyes met, and we nodded at each other. Tactical retreat! Yes, sir! <laughs> the noise. <laughs> we ran like our lives depended on it, hounded by a chorus of jeering voices. I put some serious effort into my run, enough to keep up with Enomoto, the former field ops officer. I knew I shouldn't have tried to rub it in like that. I had paid the price for my deeply regrettable decision. <laughs> I don't know, it was cute though. <laughs> December 10th, 1 p.m. Though it had been humiliating to do so in public, I had finally become Enomoto's partner. When I told Satake, he asked me to stop by field ops. Hey, young lady, sorry to call you here on your day off. That's all right. I didn't have anything urgent to do today. I see. Still, to think that Enomoto would take you as his partner. I still don't know exactly what I can do to help him. But if Enomoto has the conviction to face the murder cases, then I want to stand with him. To do that, I need to know more about the circumstances of Fuji's death. I figured you'd say that. That's exactly why I had you come here. Satake reached over and picked up a file from his desk. These are the May X Day investigation files. It has the exam rec records of Fuji's death, too. I had discussed the murder before and examined the video statement, but this is my first time getting a real in depth breakdown of the crime scene. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little afraid. But Enomoto had been the one to find Fuji's corpse first. I had to know this if I want to understand Enomoto's pain. Are you sure you should be showing me this? Yeah. I gratefully took the file from Satake and opened it. Oh. There was a picture of upended chairs, fresh bloodstains, and a Roman numeral painted on the wall. Mm. The shock made me want to look away, but I pushed through and carefully examined the photo. The points of interest in the picture are... All right, with this part, you can actually, like, move around and point to things. I believe, I'm not 100% sure, but I think you have to click on these twice. Like, you get two different things. So, first we're going to do Roman numeral. <clears throat> a Roman numeral, a hallmark of an X-Day crime, was written on the wall. There's something odd about the Roman numerals and the bloodstains on the ground. Yeah, about that. This is what it looks like zoomed in. It was difficult to tell from the earlier image, but the detail stood out up close. It looks like it's written in blood. Mm. Satake? According to forensics, the numbers were written in Fuji's blood. Uh? I couldn't help but react when I heard that piece of information. There are four captives, but the blood of the other three wasn't used. From this, we could infer that the criminal had a particular grudge against Fuji. This Roman numeral, an indicator which serves as the, a countdown to X day, should be an important symbol to Adonis. But if the culprit had gone as far as to write it in Fuji's blood, that indicates obsession. Okie dokie. I think you have to click it again. I'm not sure. We'll see. Okay, no. So apparently there's some that you actually have to click again in some cases, but this one's not one of them. All right, let's go to curtains. This was taken when the scene was found, correct? There's light coming through the curtains. But on the video, the area was dimly lit. So was it recorded at night? Also, the atmosphere seems different somehow. Oh, you're sharp. You know that we had a hard time pinpointing the crime scene, right? Yes, that's why they found the body so late. The problem isn't the time of day. The color and material of the curtain in the video is different. And that's not all. The dimensions of the room don't match the scene in the video either. So I figure the video was probably designed to slow down the investigation. That's common. I see. Now we are going to do... Wall. Where did it go? There it is. Huh? There's something on this wall. 
It's hard to see, right? Look at this. Satake showed me a picture of what looked like multiple bullet holes. These were determined to be from a firearm? The May video showed the captives being shot one by one. They altered the video so that it showed us what they wanted us to see. What happened in reality was different. When the video was shot, Fuji wasn't dead yet. Meaning? There were multiple bullet holes around Fuji's body. He died instantly from the wound to his heart, but until then, the perp tortured him by shooting him non-lethally. Oh my. The M.O. for each X-Day crime so far has been unique and unusual. You can sense a powerful will from the perps. Bullet holes has been added to materials. Let's go to the blood stain. Uh, where is it? Which one is it? There's so many blood stains. We this one? Yeah, this one. <clears throat> yes, I read a guide because I don't like bad endings. If you truly, truly want to see me do a bad ending, then I need more than one comment and like some of these videos to get it. <laughs> Cause I hate bad endings. I already cry with good endings, so what do you expect with bad endings? Do the blood stains on the ground belong to Fuji and the other three captives? Craptives. Captives. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, it's not enough blood to die of blood loss, but they were clearly dealt a lot of punishment. The photo on the next page was taken when we found Fuji. Mm. I'm not forcing you to look at it, but it's exactly what Enomoto saw. You can learn things from the state of the body. Take a look if you're ready. I have to face this, no matter how gruesome it is. And I need to know this for Enomoto's sake. I steeled myself and turned the page. I tried my hardest to keep from crying out when I looked down at the photo. This man is Fuji, an Emoto superior, whom he looked up to. I didn't know what to say when I saw the corpse shot through the chest. Someone he respected was killed in this manner, and he was the first to find the body. Fuji died of a gunshot wound to the heart. The video showed them restrained with cartoon masks on their heads. But Fuji's body was found leaning against a wall, wearing none of that. So you're saying that he was able to move around on his own? Yeah. The criminals probably never intended to let him escape. They freed him to give him hope before executing him. How cruel. <sighs> Corpse has been added to materials. Now we're going to do the chair on the side, and then I'm going to end the recording here, because it's pretty long already. The four captives were bound to th these chairs, right? Yeah. There was only a small amount of blood splatter on the chairs, so the bodies weren't dragged. In other words, Fuji wasn't moved from his chair by the criminals. He walked by himself. So Fuji was conscious and moving around before he was killed. Fuji was undoubtedly afraid, not knowing when he would die. I can relate to that a bit. I felt my collar through my shirt. And look down. Alright, I am going to let you guys go here. I hope you are enjoying. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!